I like routines. I especially love my morning routine. I like to get up early, get a shower, make breakfast, get some coffee, get out the door really quick and get to the office early. That's my morning routine. And it's very, very helpful. It's, it helps me be productive and have a really good start to my day, to my week, and to get a lot done. Routines are very, very helpful. Uh, however, sometimes we can get so caught up in a routine that the routine itself becomes uh, the objective as opposed to what the routine is supposed to help. And uh, that's all fine and dandy until it gets us into patterns of kind of how we organize society and how we treat people and how we care for the sick and uh, the poor and the needy and uh, when our patterns are patterns of systemic inequality then those aren't good and in the fifth chapter of Luke's gospel we meet Jesus the disruptor who doesn't really have a lot of time for patterns of systematic inequality uh, and he disrupts the way things are and pushes them towards the way things ought to be so let's dive into the fifth chapter of Luke and meet Jesus the disruptor there are five scenes in the fifth chapter of Luke's gospel Jesus uh, causes an abundant catch with Simon um, who will eventually be called Peter and then that's when Simon decides to follow Jesus and be his disciple then Jesus heals a leper then he heals a paralyzed man that's been dropped through the roof. The crowd is so thick that uh, the, his friends can't get it, this guy to Jesus, so they literally go up on the roof, tear a hole in the roof, and drop the guy down in. And then he calls Levi, who we know by another name also of Matthew, who we often associate the two together. And then finally ends up with this parable about old wine and new wineskins. All of these stories have an element of disruption. Jesus is doing things that he's been doing, healing, teaching, miracles, uh, but there's a quality of these that is disruptive to kind of the normal way things pe people are doing things. First, with the abundant catch, it's not normal to fish all night and catch nothing, then all of a sudden throw your nets on the other side of the boat and you get so many fish, it's threatening to sink the boat. That's not it's disruptive. It's so disruptive that Peter, or Simon, who will be called Peter, recognizes that there's something different about this guy. Something is changing. And so Peter follows him. Um, then when Jesus heals the leper, he touches him. And this was a very much a taboo and a no-no. Jesus is disrupting the social norm of how they care for the sick. Um, and, and thinking about the sick is unclean, which was normal, and Jesus says, no, I'm going to go into this unclean, go and touch this unclean person and defy uh, the kind of the social conventions around that. Um, and then with a paralyzed man that gets dropped through the roof, Jesus first says, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees and scribes in the room were like, who is this guy to think he has the authority to, uh, to forgive sins? And Jesus says, which is easier, to forgive this guy's sins or to say, stand up and walk. And he tells the paralyzed man to stand up and walk and take it. And the guy does. And he takes his mat and he leaves. And so that's Jesus is not only healing people, he's starting to, in a subtle way, proclaim his authority as uh, over the social order and over the material world. And basically, you know, as the son of God, as... God incarnate, Emmanuel, God with us, and starting to show that in ways that are catching attention and also making people nervous. Um, and especially for the, the Pharisees and scribes and the religious elites and eventually for uh, the political elites of Ro the Roman Empire, as we'll see later in the story. Then he calls Levi, and Levi was a tax collector. This is why we think he, Levi and Matthew are the same person. Um, and, and tax collectors were Jews who were working for the Roman Empire. They were, um, uh, they were collaborating with the enemy in a lot of people's minds. And here Jesus calls one to be his disciples and eats at his house. Pharisees and scribes really don't like it. Um, all that leads up to this parable about old wine and new wineskins.
It just doesn't work that way. You can't put old wine in new wineskins. You've got to put new wine into new wineskins. Disruption isn't pleasant, and yet it is necessary for growth. It is necessary for us to be caught up in the kingdom, the patterns of the kingdom of God, um, in order to be full in full communion with God. And to do that, we can't be uh, can't be completely in the patterns of the world. We can't follow those patterns. We have to follow the patterns of the kingdom, and that's disruptive. It's disruptive in our own lives, and it's disruptive uh, to the social order. And it's disruptive to the people around us. Um, and it can be a challenge. So this makes me think about St. Patrick's, and it makes me wonder about the ways the Holy Spirit is going to be disruptive um, as we move to grow and to, to cultivate this parcel of God's kingdom. It won't always be pleasant. Sometimes it'll be old wine and new wineskins that have threatened to burst, um, and how it'll be up to us to have faith through all of that and to keep looking towards God's love and the way that we expand the kingdom and open the doors even wider, just the way Luke is showing that Jesus is doing. Tomorrow we'll pick up with chapter 6. If you have any thoughts about uh, chapter 5 and Jesus the disruptor and what that, how that image makes you feel, uh, please put those in the comment section and down below. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We really hope you are enjoying these reflections on the Gospel of Luke. Stay tuned as we're going to have some special guests joining us soon as we continue this chapter by chapter journey towards Christmas through this season of Advent with the Gospel of Luke. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button down below. Also hit that thumbs up. That really helps out the video and increases our circulation and our proclamation of the gospel. And hit the bell. That way you're notified and you can uh, stay on top of this devotional journey through the gospel of Luke. Again, we hope you are enjoying these reflections and we hope that you remember that no matter what, God loves you more than you can possibly imagine. Music